for today's video, I'll go over my preseason games watch list. Uh, but yeah, for the preseason games coming up, so they start tomorrow. It's the 23rd as I record this, so 24th in the morning at about 10:30. I think the dogs play the Hawks. I'm not sure, but I definitely know the dogs are playing. Obviously, I keep keep tabs on the dog smiths a lot. So yeah, look, really excited. So I have a whole list here, about 20 things, about 15 things I want to watch. Plus, I'll name about 20 rookies that I think are potentially might get named that I want that I want to watch as well. Um, some maybe not, but I think at least 15 of the 20 are a good chance. So yeah, the first thing I want to see is the dogs midfield setup. I just want to see who plays where, how much mid time the players get. Bond's been training a lot forward. McRae might have to go on a wing a little bit. Keep an eye on that. So yeah, really excited to see that and how, how they all rotate. Trelaw, I don't think we'll play. So a little bit annoying, but see, see how we go. Second thing is Tom Green. So Tom Green was flagged by Matt the board that he said he's taking his game to the next level this preseason. The best contested ball winner in juniors since who knows how long. So, got to keep you got to keep tabs on that. So he's a little bit older. I think he's twenty. So I think he's about the same age as Bailey Smith. So uh, similar birthday, I think. But anyway, um, yeah, keep an eye on Tom Green for sure. And this one I have I have three plays here: Cripps, Oliver, and Matt Rowe all coming off the shoulder. See how they go, especially Matt Rowe. His ownership is ridiculously high for a four, for basically a four gamer. So. Still want to see how he goes, but um, yeah, he's a ball magnet. He's yeah, draft profile, draft, draft pro profile matches exactly what we saw, and, and his draft performances as well in when he was younger. So uh, yeah, played well just about every time he's played. Just want to see Matt Rowe. Number five, I want to see the CBAs of Jackson Haley. I'm not exactly sure if Haley is best twenty two. I know Matthew Nix when he was asked, he said sort of. Maybe probable ish, so yeah, that's not a good sign. We want to see, we want to hear a yes. I think the, he's necessary in the cross midfield because of his size. It's a big point of difference that the cross lacked for a, quite a long time now. But yeah, played pure inside mid in the intra club the other day. But uh, obviously against each other, there's more midfield spots. I want to see his CBAs. Yeah, he said he's only trained inside in the preseason. Number six, I want to see Adam Chera. Might sound like a bit of a funny one, but he's 21 years old, very highly touted as a junior. Uh, did have injuries in his draft year, which arguably made him slide in the draft. I'm not exactly sure, but that's what I've read on Chera. The main point with Chera, he's been training pure inside mid, and his midfield coach said that he's going to be uh, a regular starter at center bounces this year. So Adam Chera, 24% CBAs in 2020. That's going to skyrocket. Got to, I think that's worth keeping tabs on. Number seven is Sam Walsh. Always all the rave is about Sam Walsh this preseason. Uh, you ask uh, when you hear the current website talk about Sam Walsh, it's like he's just amazing. It's just Sam Walsh things, that sort of thing. Keep an eye on Sam Walsh again, inside mid, outside mid, probably both this year. Can score in both as he showed in 2020. 2020 was a bit of a funny year, but uh, apparently, yeah, his body shape's changed a little bit as well. Definitely keeping tabs on Sam Walsh. The final one in the midfield is Dyson Heppel. Apparently playing really well at halfback. So, it seems fully fit. I think he's in full training. Uh, but he's still icing a little bit before. That was at least a month ago, but probably just precautionary. So, hopefully he's fine. And yeah, one of the standouts at training in the intra club. But yeah, Dyson Heppel always prepares himself very well. So now we'll go to, to the defence. So the number one thing I want to see in defence is Luke McDonald at North. Just want to see how Noble uses him, uses him because he played exceptionally well in that role in 2020, one of the best and fairest. Do you really want to change that up? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't fit Noble's game style. He's training in defence, played defence in in match sim. So assume he played defence, but is he still going to distribute the way he did in 2020? I need to know. really want to know. The second player I want to see is Jaden Shaw. With the new rules and no Basha Huli, you would think they benefit him. And when I say new rules, I mean the man on the mark rule where they can't move across. So very interested in Jaden Shaw. A little bit unproven because only had the one premium season in the uh, 
Uh, so just keep an eye on Jane Shaw. Number three, James Harms. How much mid time does he get, and how much time does he have to spend? Does he spend at half forward? Pretty sure he's not going to go play half back anymore. He was terrible there, apparently. So, yeah, said it, it didn't work, but he's averaged 95 in the midfield before. Definitely keeping tabs on Harms. Number four, the GWS uh, rebounding defenders in Isaac Cummings and Lockie Ash. They have all the points to themselves. Woodford will come back in. Um, Haynes takes kickouts, a, little, a few kickouts as well. So, but yeah, the Giants sent out a gift to say that. Somebody asked who's taking kickouts, and they said the media team said Lockie Ash. So don't know exactly for sure, but you get more kickouts, we'll see an uptick in scoring for sure. And also, Lockie Ash was singled out by Matt DeBoer at training. Definitely keeping tabs on those two. The Ruck, who cares? And the forward line, number one, of course, who else? Josh Dunkley. Again, I said the dog since before, but because he's in the forward eligible, just want to see the mid time. And even if he gets 30, 40% mid time, you can still average 100 odd. He's shown that already. I guess Trelaw coming in makes it complicated. Um, and, you know, Dunkley does follow the contests around the ground. So even if he doesn't get the CBAs, just just want to see it. But I don't really care. I'm picking him regardless, even if they put him at full forward, which they won't. But, yeah. Which actually, they probably shouldn't pick him if he just plays full forward. But we'll definitely get mid time. He was promised by Beveridge. Number two, Zach Butters. Zach Butters has improved this preseason, so very keen to see what Zach Butters can do this year. And yeah, I think the midfield, it sounds like he's going to play a bit more midfield. And I think one of the coaches was a bit more, they were on radio. I, I did read this somewhere, someone posted it on Discord, where they were a little bit more bullish on Zach Butters in the midfield than they were with Connor Rosie's midtime. So definitely keeping tabs on Zach Butters. Number three, I want to see still side bottoms roll. I know he's played outside, I know he's played inside, I know he's played a little bit forward. I want to see how Colin would use him. I know there's a few players, you know, there's Dugowie, there's Sire, um, Josh Dacos might play a bit inside. So there's a few guys that can go in that inside mid. Hopefully, Finlay McRae gets a bit inside time as well. But we'll see. Hey, does that mean yeah, how much inside time is side bottom going to get? I'm not sure. So yeah, that's just still side bottom. The final thing in the forward line is Jai Cardwell. A lot of inside mids at Essendon. Uh, they've said Dylan Shield might play a little bit forward. Obviously, Heppel's gone down back. So I want to see what Jai Cardwell can do in the midfield. So a lot of good signs so far, and it's going to be hard to tell if he can do it for for how long he can do it. He's had injuries in the past, but said his body's feeling really good, better than it's ever been, first full preseason. And if he gets lots of midfield time, I will be interested. So didn't get a whole lot of midfield time Last year at the Giants, a lot of competition, but I want to see what he can do. So that's my main watch list, and now these are the rookies uh, that I'm definitely going to be watching. Again, not all of them will get named, but I think 15 out of 20 of these are a good chance. So in defence, Granger Barras, Chapman, Gould, Laurie, Bowie, Ware, Worrell, and Lockie Jones, and also Tom Heimel. In the midfield, Golden, Berry, Pedler, Downey, uh, Will Phillips, Powell, Lazaro, and Mead. I, heard, I read Mead, Mead's name the other day, but I haven't heard anything on him in preseason, but apparently he's doing well. Rux, Flynn, Hunter, and Triacy. And in the forward line, Finley McRae, Dev Robinson, Robinson, Ned Cahill, Harry Jones, Campbell, Will Kelly, Spicer, Brockman. And also I have Cockatoo here. I don't think I'll start Cockatoo even if he plays. That is, he's had a few minor hamstring tightness throughout the preseason not for me thanks for watching the video and yeah looking forward to i can't wait for preseason it's yeah, it's been way too long so uh, let me know who you're watching if i missed anybody um, but yeah thanks for watching and we'll see you guys soon